Hello everyone. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. A uh, quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. all right so happy evening everyone a very good evening and welcome to today's youtube live session where we are going to discuss the part 3 of radiology investigations i believe that we'll have one more part after this where we will discuss the advanced investigations also like uh, cystinography mydogram and all those stuff the so mri sequences or uh, the advanced one swi uh dwi right gre all of that we'll be discussing in the next part 4 that is tomorrow at 7 pm today uh in this uh, episode 48 of nf100 what is nf100 neat pg and fmg top 100 topics we are mainly going to focus on the investigations that are related to your uh, nephro radiology that is ivp rgp asu mcu related to that we'll have hepatobiliary ercp mrcp all those stuffs and then we have the gynac wala hst thing and then we have uh, hrct as well to be discussed all right and what's the plan for the rest of the day like uh, this week we will be having classes special class which we used to have at 5 pm otherwise uh, for this week it is going to be at uh, 9 pm okay so the special class for this week the change time is basically at 9 pm today we have another interesting kbmd episode what is kbmd kon banega md that's a live quiz and today again it is on top five, uh, 15 mnemonics right top 15 mnemonics it's going to be mixed bag uh, mnemonics right so the mnemonics that we might have seen previously to revise them with the mcqs that is what we'll have it's a special class that means it's a free live class and if you are asked for a code while uh, enrolling for the same you can use the code dr nikita all right so dwi i'll cover it tomorrow perfusion uh, if possible i'll cover that also tomorrow all right and this is there's a great news there the unlock 20 wala offer which was there till yesterday has been extended till this week that is saturday february 19th so instead of the 10% discount that you used to get now you have double the discount that is 20% on all the subscriptions you need to use the code and you can use the code dr nikita life and you can avail of this 20% off on all the subscriptions be it plus or be it iconic right so these are the prices that you have the offer price till this week that is saturday and this is the regular and this is the offer price you can see it and decide which one suits you the best all right i hope all of you have now registered for all india mock test which is on february 26 the sunday next sunday and uh, you also have uh, this sunday 6 pm february 19 you have combat like some of you had asked me what is the syllabus for this combat it is your ortho obgy surgery and pediatrics so make sure you have revised these subjects and you get a top rank because top rankers will get exciting rewards and the 10 lucky participants will get amazing gift vouchers as well so make sure you get a reward for yourself by getting a top rank all right and if you have missed the previous batch that we had started uh right uh, you can uh, the for neat pg 22 all educator revision batch is what we have started 140 hours it's 90 days by may and it will be complete everything will be covered in that apart from that for 2023 students we are starting on february 19 i'll be catering to radiology even for fmg students for the uh, december we are starting with a new batch on february 19 and again for four months for the june students and in all of these batches i'll be catering to radiology on the plus platform for the students okay now let's start discussing our today's uh, topic of discussion what do you think is this investigation here now this is a previously asked image so very very important what do you think is uh, this investigation here ab 
absolutely right. This is ERCP, that is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticogram. By cholangiopancreatico, we mean that it's the CBD and the pancreatic duct. Both should be visualized in the image, right? So what do we see here in this image? This is the CBD here, right? This is the CBD and this is the pancreatic duct from the right to the left. Okay, this is the CBD, this is the pancreatic duct. It is dilated in this image, here it is normal. Why do I call it ERCP? Why not MRCP? Because we can see the endoscope here, right? We can see the endoscope here coming from above, stomach, duodenum. Once we reach the ampulla of wetter where the CBD pancreatic duct open, we have the contrast push and we see the CBD and the pancreatic duct. So a few questions related to ERCP which are important. Number one, does it have radiation exposure? Yes, because we do it under fluoroscopy, that is x-rays. So remember, it has radiation exposure. Do we need contrast? Yes, we need contrast because it is a contrast x-ray basically, right? So what contrast will we use? Iodinated contrast because it's an x-ray based modality. Any x-ray based modality, be it contrast x-ray, be it CECT, be it HSD, be it IVP, we are going to use iodinated contrast. What is the advantage? What is the disadvantage as compared to MRCP? This is an invasive procedure, right? Putting the endoscope, pushing the contrast, it's invasive. So we do not prefer it like first hand. We do it when MRCP is not giving the answer. So generally, this is kept as gold standard because it is invasive. The investigation of choice for biliary pancreatic duct pathologies is generally MRCP. This is gold standard. What is the advantage? It can be therapeutic as well, right? It is not just diagnostic. Suppose during ERCP, I see a CBD stone. In the same setting, I can remove the stone as well. So it is therapeutic as well. That is the advantage over MRCP. Okay, that's the advantage over MRCP. Okay. Next one, what do you think is this investigation? What do you think is this? So yes, now this is MRCP. What is MRCP? Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreaticogram. Okay, so this is under MRI, cholangiopancreatico. This is where we see the cholangio, the CBD and the pancreatic duct. Do we see an endoscope here? We are not seeing the endoscope here. Okay, we are not seeing the endoscope here. So this is not ERCP. This is MRCP under MRI. A few points about MRCP. Advantages, no radiation exposure because it is basically a MRI, right? Contrast needed, contrast not needed. You can do it without contrast. So how do the CBD and the pancreatic duct appear white if we are not giving contrast? Because in MRI, the fluid anyways can appear white without contrast. In which sequence of fluid appears white? In which sequence of fluid appears white? Water white is T2. So please remember this point that MRCP is a heavily T2 weighted sequence. Okay, because you want the water to look white. So it's, uh, no contrast is needed. What is the other advantage of MRCP? Apart from that, you can do MRI abdomen also. You can have a look at the liver. You can have a look at the rest of the organs. It's a cross-sectional imaging, right? It can help you uh, look at the CBD. Suppose in ERCP, let's say, here there's a stricture or there's an obstruction in the CBD. When we are pushing the contrast, because there's an obstruction, we are not able to see the proximal CBD or the intrahepatic biliary radicals. In MRCP, that problem will not be there. Even if there's an obstruction here, irrespective of that, it will help you have a look at the entire CBD, right? So that is the advantage. Now look at this MRCP, you can see that the biliary duct, the CBD, the hepatic ducts, the intrahepatic biliary radicals are dilated. Why? Because we see this black color filling defect in the distal CBD, which has this crescent shape, which is suggestive of stone in the CBD, right? That is suggestive of stone. So stone is basically identified by the filling defect in the CBD, right? Cole, doco, lithiasis. Doco matlab duct. Okay? So basically for bile duct, for pancreatic duct pathologies, 
MRCP is the investigation of choice because it is non-invasive. There's no radiation exposure. Okay. Now have a look at this one. What do you think is uh, this investigation here? Have a look at this investigation here. What do you think is this image showing? So can we appreciate here that there's a tube here. Okay, through this tube, we inject the contrast. It's a T-shaped tube here. I don't know whether the pointer is seen or not. Is the pointer seen here? Oh, give me a minute. Okay, all right. I believe the pointer will now be visible. Right, I hope the pointer is visible now. All right. So this is the, uh, you know, this is the T-tube that we are seeing here. Okay, this is the T-tube that we are seeing here in the CBD. So remember, this is a T-tube cholangiogram. It's a cholangiogram only. It's not a pancreaticogram. It's only the cholangiogram, right? Then in the post-operative period, how will you identify T-tube? The T tube the outer part, it is Bahar, skin ke Bahar. This is how you will see the T tube going into the CBD, right? So you will see some tube coming like this. It might go out like this. You can see that and it would be T shaped. That's a T tube cholangiogram, okay? Next one, what do you think is this investigation here? What is this investigation here? So we see the CBD here, but here the catheter that we see, which is containing the contrast, it is not going into the CBD, right? It's going into one of the intrahepatic radicals, right? It's going into the intrahepatic radical. It's not going into the CBD. So this is your hepatic vala cholangiogram. So this is percutaneous. We go through the skin. You can see the needle going here. Transhepatic percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram that is PTC. When do we do a PTC? Like suppose there's an obstruction here in the distal CBD. So ERCP we are not able to see the proximal ones. In that case we can go from the intrahepatic. Okay. So remember this is useful when there is distal obstruction. Okay. When there is distal obstruction in that cases. So percutaneous going through the skin, through the liver, and you see a cholangiogram. You will see the catheter going into one of the liver car radicals. It's not into the CBD. T-tube will go into the CBD. The end of the T-tube would be into the CBD. PTC, may it would be an intrahepatic radical. Is this clear with everyone? How will you differentiate these investigations? So we have seen ERCP, MRCP. Then we have seen T-tube cholangiogram. And we have seen PTC. Okay. Now, look at this one. What do you think is this investigation? So, a black and white image like this, absolutely right. When you see a black and white image with the anatomy not being very clear, it's your nuclear scan. It's a scintigraphy where you are seeing the CBD. You are seeing the gallbladder, the intrahepatic radicals. What is the scan done for the biliary tract? It is the HEDA scan. Okay, it is the HEDA scan, immunodiacetic acid. HEDA ke jo bai ban hai, DCDA scan, PPDA scan, jo bhi EDA wale scan hai, immunodiacetic acid. That is done for the biliary tract. Okay, so that is the role of HIDA scan. Remember the nuclear scan, the scintigraphy for the biliary tract. It is the HIDA scan. Okay, now what is the role of HIDA scan? HIDA basically uh, it is taken up by the liver, the biliary system. It is excreted into the biliary system. From the CBD in the later part, you will see it is going into the duodenum. So let's say in a newborn who has conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, where you are suspecting biliary obstruction, that is biliary atresia, 
to rule out biliary atresia hida is very good scan why because if you see the hida coming into the biliary tract and into the intestine into the duodenum you know that the biliary tract is patent that means it's not biliary atresia okay it's not biliary atresia so that is your role of header next to identify the bile leak now bile leak is a very important topic for your exam especially i n i c t in a patient post cholecystectomy if you want to uh, see bile leak if you are suspecting bile leak patient is having pain abdomen patient is having fever ultrasound is showing fluid and you want to see whether it's a bile leak then in that case all right in that case hida is the most sensitive investigation okay to see whether there is leak or not hida is most sensitive but what is the limitation with hida it will just tell you ki leak hai ki nahi whether that hida is going outside the biliary tract it will not tell you from where it is leaking it will not help you localize the leak okay that is the disadvantage with hida so uh, clear with everyone about hida yes so mrcp comes to rescue in that case okay now we have hepato biliary specific contrast agents also in mri like you have hida excreted in the biliary system similarly in mr we have specific contrast which will go into the biliary system and they can help us localize the leak as well advantage with ercp it can be therapeutic also right so mrcp is preferred then comes ercp hida is just to see whether there's a leak or no okay next one uh this was about your hepatobiliary going to your nephro radiology investigations what do you think is this investigation here Okay, so let me give you the options. Do you think it is IVP, RGP, RGU, ASU, MCU? So these are the investigations that I want you to choose from. Right. This is intravenous pyelography. I V P. Whenever it is P, pyelo, pyelo means pelvic lysis system. That means it helps you localize the kidneys. Right. the function of the kidneys is seen this is where you see the pelvic lysis system of the kidney you have the ureter and we have the urinary bladder right so that is how ivp looks like both the kidneys normally functioning would be seen so if the kidneys are seen it's a pyelogram okay how do we give the contrast in ivp it is intravenous what contrast do we give you can see that in the background it's a x ray image right so basically ivp is a contrast x ray whenever it's a x ray based modality we give iodinated contrast right we give iodinated contrast so this is your ivp with iodinated contrast that is given right so ivp will not be done in renal failure because iodinated contrast nahi denge okay so this is ivp very very important look at this one what do you think is this investigation here हाँ रूटीन हमारा आई वी ब्रेकियल वेन जो हमारा एल्बो में हम लेंगे वहां से हम ले सकते हैं एनी आई वी कॉन्ट्रास्ट एनी आई वी वेन गिव मी अ मिनट right what do you think is this this is mcu uh not mcu no this is not like one this is not an ivp which is showing that one kidney is absent or one kidney is not functioning right this is basically not ivp this is rgp what do we mean by rgp it's a retrograde pyelogram okay it's a retrograde pyelogram retrograde means that give me a minute ha huh. retrograde means that we are going backwards from the routine flow upward from the kidney into the ureter into the bladder we are going a uh, backward direction that means from down we are going up how do i identify retrograde by this catheter cannula that we see here the ureteric orifice is cannulated and the contrast is pushed up so it is retrograde if you see this in an image that is your rgp because it is one catheterization one ureteric opening catheterized at one time 
So at one time we see one side ka pelvic elliptical system. Okay, so that is R G P. Look at this one. What do you think is this investigation? I am coming to ASU. Next, I will be coming to ASU. So, now we have two more investigations, whether it's MCU or ASU or RGU. Let me tell you the full forms here. MCU stands for Micturating Cystourethrogram. Okay. MCU stands for Micturating Cystourethrogram. RGU stands for Retrograde Urethrogram. ASU stands for ascending urethrogram. Okay, ascending urethrogram. Now, MCU is also called as VCUG. That is widening cystourethrogram. So, they both mean the same. Micturating or widening cystourethrogram. So, how do we do MCU is basically, we put the foleys into the bladder. We fill the bladder with contrast. When the bladder is full, we remove the foleys. We ask the patient to micturate and while the patient is micturating, we take the radiograph, we take the images, right? So that's why it's micturating or voiding. To micturate or void, the bladder has to be full. It cannot be empty, right? So that's why in MTU or VCUG, you will see a bladder which is completely distended with contrast, right? So this is the cystro part, right? The bladder and we can see the urethra that is your cyst urethrogram. What is the advantage of MCU? Because it's a dynamic, when the patient is micturating, the bladder is actually contracting. So the pressure in the bladder will increase. If there is a reflux, a psychoureteric reflux, if it is present, you will see the contrast going into the ureter. It's a very good investigation for VUR, right? It's the investigation of choice for VUR, because basically to see the reflux, you want the bladder to contract. It's good for the posterior urethra, right? Because the contrast is coming from the bladder. So the posterior urethra will be seen very well. So for posterior urethral valves, MCU is the investigation of choice. Remember in posterior urethral valve, it is not your urethrogram, even though it's a urethral pathology. The investigation of choice is MCU. Because in PUV, the valve which is present, it does not open downwards. It opens upwards. If you push the contrast in urethrogram, the valve will open and you will not see any obstruction. But if the contrast is coming from upwards, the valve will not open and there will be the dilatation of posterior urethra. What appearance do we see with PUV in that case? Absolutely right, Srishti. So that is your whole appearance that we will see the bladder and the distended urethra that is the key whole appearance which can be identified on antenatal ultrasound also it is there in a male child right so antenatal ultrasound can also identify that going to this one what do you think is this investigation here What do you think is this one? Now, this is just the urethra which is seen. So, this is urethrogram. It's a retrograde urethrogram, also called as ascending urethrogram. We can see the syringe sort of thing here, right? There's a syringe sort of thing. We cannulate the external urethral opening and we push the contrast, right? You can see this, uh, you know, the jet of contrast which will go into the bladder. So you might see some contrast going into the bladder, but the bladder will not be distended with contrast. That's the difference of RGU from MCU, right? So what is this useful for? Anterior urethral pathologies. This is the investigation of choice for urethral stricture for urethral injury, okay? So your ASU or RGU is the investigation of choice for urethral stricture or urethral injury, urethral rupture, vagera. Okay. Now, if I ask you a question, which of the investigations that we learned, that is IVP, RGP, MCU, or ASU, that is RGU, which of these has radiation exposure 
and which of these does not have radiation exposure? Which of these has radiation exposure and which does not have radiation exposure? Absolutely right. All of them are basically your contrast x-rays. We saw the image, right? Everything appears white. So all of them are contrast x-rays. So therefore, all of them have radiation exposure. Okay, all of them have radiation exposure. Remember that. So going to the next image, look at the image A and look at the image B. Identify the image A and the image B. What do you think is the image A and the image B? Very, very important. And these are the potential questions in your exam that can be asked. Absolutely right. So what do we see here in the first? Here also we are seeing the pelvic lysis system, the ureter, pelvic lysis system, ureter and bladder. The difference is in the image B, we are seeing the white bones. This is your pelvic bone. This is the femur. Here we are not seeing the white bones. So basically, this one is MRI and this one is CT scan. This is your MR urogram, right? MRU, MR urogram. This is your CT urography or CT IVU. CT urography or CT IVU as it is called, okay? What is the advantage? MRU will not have radiation exposure. You can do without contrast, like you can do MRCP without contrast. So in a patient of renal failure, MRU will be helpful, right? So this is your MRU and this is your CTU or CTIVU. Okay, remember that. Now that was about your renal investigation. So we have seen hepatobiliary, we have seen your nephrovala, going to your gynecvala. This has been asked in your neat PG exam twice. Right, so even though it seems like a basic thing, but it has actually been asked even in NEET PG 21 and also in NEET PG uh, 2019. This has been asked twice in the exam. Yes, so this is basically HSD, hysterosalpingogram. Hystero, that is your uterus. Salpingo, that is your fallopian tubes. Now, the question was basically identify the investigation. Is it X-ray HSD? Is it CT HSD? Is it genitogram? Is it saline HSD? Right. So remember that this is your normal routine X-ray HSD where we do not use saline. Right. What do we use? What is this white thing that we are using? It is your iodinated contrast. Right. It's an iodinated contrast. How do we do this HSD? You can see the cervix is being cannulated. This is the cannula. Then we push the contrast, iodinated contrast. The contrast goes into the fallopian tubes. If the tube is patent, we will see the spill of dye going into the peritoneal cavity. We will see the contrast coming out. So the major role, the major advantage of HSD, the indication is to look for tubal patency. Okay, it is basically done for tubal patency. It is not done to identify the uterine anomalies. Remember, for uterine anomalies, HSD is not a good investigation. Especially to differentiate septate versus bicornuate uterus is difficult on HSD. Unicornuate can be identified. Septate and bicornuate ke liye, we will need ultrasound, MRI or the gold standard laprohistroscopy. Okay. So now my question, whether HSD has radiation exposure. Does HSD have radiation exposure? Yes, because it's an X-ray, right? You can see this is the pubic symphysis in the background. This is the bone which is appearing white. Okay, so this is X-ray. So it has radiation exposure. What is the best time of the menstrual cycle when you will do HSD? It is between around day 9 to day 10. That is the best time, okay? Around day 14, day 10, 14, wagera ke baad, chances of the female being pregnant, so no radiation. Initial time, first five days, endometrium is not repaired yet, can lead to injury, endometriosis, so not done. Remember, it's day 9, which is done very, very frequently, okay? 
All right. Swasti, you remember a lot of things from our classes. I'm glad that you can jump from one topic to the other. Okay, so this is done around day nine. Okay, it's done in on day nine. That's the best. Now look at this one and tell me what is this investigation now? What do you think is this investigation? Next time you get this image in your exam, what do you think is this? Is it X-ray HSD? Is it CT HSD? Is it MR HSD? Is it ultrasound HSD? What is this? Do you remember the concept from our previous part one, part two of radiology investigations? Whenever, whenever you see that the contrast is black color, what, where is the contrast? Uterus, the fallopian tubes. Whenever you see that the contrast is black, it is always which investigation? It is which investigation? It is your fluoroscopy. Remember DSA, digital subtraction angiography is the one where the contrast will be black. Similarly, this is fluoroscopy. Contrast X-rays are nothing but they are done under your fluoroscopy, right? Dynamic, you want to see the spill. So you will do under fluoroscopy. Remember, it is nothing but this is a routine same X-ray HSD. When you see on the monitor, it can appear black. You can make it look white. So remember, it's the same X-ray HSD. So next time you get an image like this, this is your X-ray HSD. Can you appreciate the bone here, which is black? Which is the bone which you can see it is black? Basically, it's the inverted image of this image that we saw. Okay, so it can appear black or it can appear white. Remember, even this is X-ray HSD. Okay, all right. Let's have a look at this one. What do you think is this? Already written there. This is sonohysterogram or sonosalpingogram or sono HSD or saline infusion sonohysterogram sonosalpingogram S I S saline infusion sonosalpingogram. Okay, so what do we do in that case? It is under sonography. So again, we cannulate the cervix, we push saline. It is saline infusion. How will saline appear on ultrasound when you have distended the endometrial cavity? The fluid is black in color. So look at this one. This is the uterus that we are seeing here on TVS. This is the endometrial cavity. Okay, so you have the uterus, you have the endometrial cavity. The endometrial cavity is distended with saline. You can see that black color there. And within the endometrial cavity, we are seeing a lesion there, right? The ecogenic lesion that is endometrial polyp, right? So remember that saline infusion sonography is a very good investigation to confirm endometrial polyp. Why? Because within the endometrial cavity, we will see the ecogenic lesion. So whenever there's a confusion, whether it is endometrial polyp or a submucosal fibroid, which can look similar, do a saline infusion sonography. If it is within the boundary of the endometrial cavity, you know that it is endometrial polyp. Fibroid will be outside the endometrium, right? So in a patient where you don't want to give radiation, X-ray HSC nahi karna hai, you can also check for the tubal patency in saline infusion sonogram. You will see the saline coming out on ultrasound. The advantage, it will not have radiation exposure. Okay, that it will not have radiation exposure. All right. So with everyone, this is another potential image or question that can come in your exam for endometrial polyp. Saline infusion sonography is a very important investigation. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the last part here, uh, Nuzat had asked for it, I believe, right? In the next part, part four, we will have the MRI sequences, advanced wale, SWI, DWI, right? All of those we will be discussing. And we will have your cisternogram, myelogram, jo baki uh, investigations baki hai, PET CT, contrast enhanced ultrasound, all of that we'll be discussing in the next part four, tomorrow, 7 p.m. All right. Yes, this is your HRCT test. Now, what does HRCT stand for? It is high resolution CT. How is it different from the routine CT? How is it different from the normal CT? It is high resolution. The machine is the same. The CT scan machine is the same. 
just like the parameters that we use to take the images and reconstruct the images is different. So what makes it high resolution? This is your previous year question asked in one of the previous exams. See, high resolution HRCT, you take thin slices. The slice thickness is less. Okay. So the slice thickness is less. Second point, how is the field of view? Is it small or is it large? You only want to focus on the lungs in HRCT. It's a small field of view. Whenever the field of view is small, how does the image appear? The image appears magnified, right? So basically, it gives you the magnified image because of the small FOV. What is the algorithm that we use to reconstruct the images? Lung algorithm. Is it soft tissue algorithm? It is bone algorithm. Remember, it is the bone algorithm which is used for reconstruction. Okay. So this was a question which was asked. All of the following are true about HRCT except thin slice, thick slice, small FOV, bone algorithm. Right. It's a thick slice which is incorrect. So remember, it is the bone algorithm, not the lung algorithm. Where do we use this HRCT? Wherever you have an air-filled cavity which is surrounded by bone, that means too extreme on the HU scale. You have the black air and you have the white bone. The two extremes where you have, that gives a sharp image with HRCT. So example, test. You have the lungs filled with air surrounded by bone, the ribs. PNS, you have filled with air and surrounded by bone. Temporal bone, you have the middle ear cavity, mystoid cavity, air, and you have the surrounding bones. So basically, HRCT is used for chest, for paranasal sinuses, and for temporal bone. For all of these, we use HRCT. In lung, in chest, what is the indication of HRCT? Where do we use HRCT? So HRCT for lungs is used when you want to have a look at the lung architecture. Right, it's not any space occupying lesion. Lung architecture may be a problem. Like bronchi come in the lung architecture. So basically, for bronchiectasis, HRCT is the best. For interstitial lung disease, where you want to see the interlobular septa, which are very well seen on HRCT, you want to see the ground glass opacities, better seen on HRCT. All of these will be picked up on HRCT better. So whenever it's a lung parenchyma, you want to see for fibrosis, then you will do HRCT. Routine CT, the spinal contrast CT is done when you want to look for a mass, right? Let's say it's a lung tumor, mediastinal lymph nodes, we routine CT. Karenge, okay? For HRCT, we do not need any contrast because it's a parenchyma ka pathology, just the bronchi, the interlobular septa, the secondary lobule that we want to see. So no contrast is needed for HRCT. Okay, remember that no contrast is needed for HRCT. Right. Yes, so for COVID-19, you must have seen everyone doing HRCT. You can go up main What is the main finding? Your recent question. Ground glass opacities. Bilateral peripheral ground glass. Opacities are a common finding which will be picked up on HRCT better. Right. So COVID-19, we do HRCT. So remember, basically for bronchiectasis, interstitial lung disease, HRCT is the best investigation. Okay, remember for bronchiectasis, ILD, HRCT is the best investigation. Clear with everyone? Got the concept? Right? Everyone is clear with this? All right, so that was about our today's part three of radiology investigations. We will have the final part four tomorrow. If there's anything that you want me to include in the tomorrow's class, do let me know even on the Telegram group. All right, and when are we meeting next today? Uh, get ready in next uh, one hour or so at 9 p.m. on the Unacademy app for a free live class, which is Con Banega MD. That is your KBMD with mnemonics. The MCQs would be based on the easy tricks to remember the difficult topics, right? So we'll quickly revise few MCQs at 9 p.m. If you are enrolling and you are asked for a code, you can use the code Dr. Nikita to enroll for the same. Tomorrow, again, we will be meeting same time, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m. on YouTube and 9 p.m. on the app. Okay, that would be the plan for 
tomorrow as well and this is for today 9 pm okay thank you so much everyone hoping to see you at 9 pm on the earn academy app for kpmd till then goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning